ways. You take this overly independent female. Nope, that's fine. You know, hey, hey, ma'am, I, I know we slept together unprotected, but I, I don't want a baby right now. You're going to have your baby. Fast forward three to five years later, this same person that told your ass they ain't want a baby. Now you have some sort of complex or you on a mission to make them be a father based on a decision that you made. Because, you know, women, we get the final say on whether you're going to be born. So now what's missing, honesty, that, hey, he's not not picking up the phone because of you. You're a wonderful kid. You're a great child. He's not picking up the phone because of my ass. Because I made a choice that was selfish, that he disagreed with. But it was because I wanted to and it's my body. And now fast forward, he don't like me. He don't come over here because he don't like me. He don't pick up the phone because he don't like me. He don't fuck with you because of me. And a lot of your ways and me raising you, you got it from me. So it conflicts with what he wants to deal with. To where you can still feel and go through what you went through, but it will be real. And on another, another note, same lane, another note. Some of us are not honest with the children that, girl, your daddy was fucked up when I told him that I was going to have a kid. Like before you were born, he never displayed any adult responsible, you know, character traits as far as bill paying and managing money to be. But I chose again, same sort of situation to have the baby anyway or birthday money or did. He never had the fucking money before you was born. And this is the stuff that's not being said to the children. So when I do Zooms again, like what I'm doing in the morning, where I'm sitting in a Zoom with a bunch of, you know, high school, 11, 12th graders, people that just graduated, they're trying to process this shit. Why they didn't get certain stuff, why they can't get certain stuff, why they don't know certain stuff, why a bitch wasn't talking to them about certain stuff. And I have to be that adult in the room that explains to them, this is what the fuck your mama afraid to tell your ass. This is what your daddy didn't stick around to say. These are the issues that you're dealing with. And if you resolve them you will be a 35 45 you know 50 year old adult that is a fatherless child now my son's father he uh, I, I i mean i was young graduated high school early and i, I don't want to have kids now i want to go off have my career he told me you're gonna have my son he's gonna be born on my birthday no 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 everything he said happened and then he said well after i got pregnant oh you know what i'm not ready to have a kid but if you want to have this kid i'll help you hold on hold on hold on hold on i didn't want to have a kid in the first place but now we were both being irresponsible i'm okay i don't want to put that i don't want my body go through that but of course at 18 i don't yep. know any better i'm tripping but that come back on my father issues and stuff like that yep. okay well he said this and he's showing me this but you, you're not living right so Yep. And now, of course, but I thank God that I didn't have any more kids. That I'm like, okay, I don't want to go through that same trauma and whatever anymore, in which I see the effect. But now I can't, my kids being mad, I have to suck it up and deal with it, and but have to find the right ways because it was my fault. I made the ultimate decision. He always lived the life that he chose. It's going to continue. That is not a reflection of who you are. You could be better than that. Yep. But in order to do that, we have to have a good foundation and, and heal from that and move on. Yep. And now you said, okay, I have to be And not no F men and this and that because... I mean, I love that. If you so, don't, if you, <laughs> if you don't offer your, if you don't offer your children a certain level of transparency, transparency as far as the situation um, or the type of relationship they were born from, it will fuck them up as adults because that's what's wrong with a lot of adults. If you don't really dig into your emotional issues and your traumas as an adult. It will fuck you up as far as your behavior with socializing with people and being in relationships. If you're not exposed to certain shit, like I was just explaining, and a few of y'all could relate. When you don't grow up seeing how grown men chastise and discipline, that shit feels uncomfortable when you have your own children and you're in situations. Like Erica said, this is when you see moms mad at coaches and shit. Don't talk to my son like that. It feels uncomfortable and super aggressive to you because bitch, you ain't had no daddy. So you don't, feel, you don't know what it feel like when a man get on your ass from a loving space. You think every type of criticism or chastising or, you know, correction from a male is some sort of abuse. 
Because you in your upbringing, all you ever saw was your mama discipline. You never had a male figure in your life from a positive space correct you, your mother, your siblings from a space of love. And I'm trying to move forward with y'all. Does anybody not understand it? Because it's so important to understand, you know, what you're uncomfortable with because it's not familiar to you in your conscious or your unconscious mind. I get what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I guess I um I had a different kind of experience because my mother was very uh, she was very submissive, very passive aggressive, very quiet. Mm -hmm. She was not bold, loud. I never got she never whooped me. I think mm -hmm. my stepdaddy might have made her whoop me one time. She cried mm -hmm. more than I did. Mm -hmm. So she was very very soft. But my stepfather was very extremely stern. Mm -hmm. I know he couldn't wait to whoop my ass like. You know, like that kind of person. A so, disciplinarian. Right. He was really, really, like, hard. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? He, look, you gonna be outside red leaves in the rain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, hit you down. About you being a girl, you gonna clean this, you gonna clean that, and you gonna go outside. Like, he was just, that's just the way he was. Um, and I didn't, I hated him for it. And I ended up moving out at like 14, but I did get like <laughs> at least five, five, six years of it straight. Um, but still, you know, even though I got to see that, it's like I still have that issue with respecting and and appreciating men. So as let's talk about it. So now let's talk. I want to be the authority. Got you. No, so let's talk about it. <laughs> Where was your real father? Uh, my real father is, um, he was around, like we lived in the same city. Um, I never really spent a lot of time with him unless somebody else was taking me around him. Like my grandmother, um, his mother, and he hated his mother. I don't know what that relationship was really about. But she would like, uh, he would like be out places doing his thing and she would just pop up with me like he'll be at a wedding or he'll be, you know, he's like a socialite, like does Mardi Gras real heavy, all of that. And she would just pop up with me and you could just see like the, the, I don't know, like his face and his whole uh, demeanor just changed like. Like, you just really interrupting his party. <laughs> and did anybody offer you, as you went through that as a child, did anybody offer you an explanation as to what the situation in which you were born from? Like how I was just talking to Alexis about. Well, my mom did explain to me that, you know, uh, when she got pregnant, he wasn't, you know, like he wanted a kid or anything. I think he was dating other people for sure. Um, he got married when I was like maybe not even two or three months old and it was really weird because his wife looks just like my mom and then my mom got married and my stepdad has his his last name they had the same last name they were like really petty about it mm -hmm. like it was so so petty and like <laughs> it was just weird for me and confusing um and i know my mother you know she went about it on a I don't need him. He should want to be in your life kind of level. She didn't do child support. She didn't do, you know, all that rah-rah extra trying to, my grand, his mother did that for her. <laughs> and so, um, so now know, when you, just, when we speak on, and I understand everything you just shared, when we speak on you as a kid being disciplined, did you ever mm -hmm. get an explanation from your mom as to why she didn't step up and take that role? Why your stepfather took that role? Did y'all ever have conversations about that? Uh, I I do think my mom was uh, rather abused as a kid. And so she didn't want to... Uh, it's almost like she didn't want to discipline me at all. She more wanted to be my friend. Did you ever um, talk to your mom about her father? Uh, yes. Uh, her father was more of a, he was a seaman. Um, so he wasn't really home a lot, but he was more like, you know, the financial guy. Um, she's the baby girl. So um, I know he disciplined his boys a lot. 
And then, you know, as far as the girls, there's a lot going on there. Um, it's important that you understand your family history. And by family history, I'm not talking about like just the names on your family tree, but where y'all got y'all behavior patterns from. When you listen to how she's describing her upbringing, all behavior is coming from somewhere. Yes. If you got two parents that they're in a petty back and forth feud, and then you add step parents into these situations, a lot of times there can be resentment towards the children based on what the adults have going on. Because as the kids, a lot of times you are the representation of that other parent to them that we don't like. Love. I almost got in a situation like that um, where I was dealing with somebody and I didn't realize until like later on in the, in the relationship that um, he was coming from a space where he was like bitter about his baby mother kicking him out, whatever. And I got pregnant, but something in my, something in my, I don't know, something, I just, something just told me. No, this is just not how this gonna go. Cause I didn't want to bring my child in the way I was brought up, mm -hmm. with no father. You know? mm -hmm. And I already knew, like, oh, okay, if this is going on, and just say they wind up being on good terms or whatever, mm -hmm. my child's gonna be neglected. Like, my child's not even gonna know who the father is. Yep. You know what I mean? Cause yep. he's not gonna be able to tell his baby mother or oh, another child. Cause then they'll he then he won't be able to see his daughter. So yep. it was just like, yep, you had to get up these out of that. are the things that. When we talk about being parents and we look at how we were parenting, you have to be honest with yourself about this stuff. This is why you hear me talk about this type of shit often on my platform. This is the stuff that's driving the behavior once children are being born. A lot of y'all don't realize when I did that live and I, I did that Zoom, you know, asking people about who are the opinion leaders in their family. Do you understand about certain feuds and falling outs? And yo, this is a lot of times why you were raised up the way you were, kept from certain people, treated a certain kind of way. Rather, you were treated better than your cousins or your siblings or your step siblings, like, or worse. A lot of this stems from the traumas and shit that we're talking about. Adults walking around with unresolved shit and it trickles over into how they parent. Oh, when I was probably like six or seven years old, I told my mom, I said, Mom, Granny and Grandpa, we don't look like them. Those aren't your parents. She said, you don't know what you're talking about. I said, Mom, why you don't look like them? My mom looks like, um, if anybody's like, Bette Midler, real fair, almost ready here. My mom is Jewish and black. Mm -hmm. And she's really fair. Both of my grandparents are um, like really dark brown skin. Mm -hmm. And so then she had to break down to me and said, okay, well, I was adopted. So my grandmother is actually our cousin because mm -hmm. my mother, her biological mother was on drugs. And so she wasn't able to raise her. And then she gave her to her cousin. So she was adopted within the family. And her father, well, we were told, like, was this wealthy doctor. And I said, oh, that's why my mom went into nursing or whatever. And he paid her off, but didn't sign a birth certificate because he was married and had other kids. So at a young age, I was already to process something is not right. And yep. so always growing up the life. And then I know if I could figure it out at that age, my mom growing up not knowing or who to identify with, yep. especially back then. Like, yep. Yeah, you you spot on. And, 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 and this is why I go back to like the Zoom I'm doing tomorrow. A lot of these kids, they realize like my parents be lying about a lot of shit. My mama be capping by a lot of shit. Bitch be making up a, a lot of shit and they think we dumb and we don't see it just because all our lives, you know, they just been telling us what to do. And then I'll be encouraging adults like you got to really understand how this country works. Like I do a lot of reading and it has a lot to do with studies you know, statistics. Like I live and breathe statistics because most of what we do when we fill in our applications, when we sign our children up for school, that shit be information collected for statistics. And they look at a lot of what goes along with when you 
check that single parent household box 